we have a lot to update on today. Obviously, we got all the 180 gallon aquariums in place. Now to make matters easier, these were all delivered right to my front yard. I had the option of walking them down the driveway, down between the side of the gallery of my house, in through the front door, try to navigate around the 700 and get them up there. Or we just put them through the window. Now these racks stand 56 inches tall, almost five feet. It was better to get four guys total and that's what we did right through the front door you know slide them through grab them with those suction cups and the four of us put them up top and i swear it was easier than just two of us lifting it for some reason these guys felt like they might have weighed 20 pounds each bottom line though is all the aquariums are now in place and we can start doing some things obviously i already got a lot done and we're going to cover that right now first and foremost we got all the lights completed again we went with pendant style lighting and i gotta say this is just absolutely awesome it's the same lights used for every aquarium obviously i need to clean up the wires a little bit more but if you guys remember when we put the the grass plant here uh, another benefit to that was we run all the cords behind it Right now it's just sitting on top and that's not that big of a deal, but you'll also remember that the other ones that we use came in black, but we also had white ones. And these are the white ones. I'm using these as natural reflectors. And all I did was spray paint the outside a couple coats of black spray paint, matte black. And you know, it just came out absolutely gorgeous. And that's what we did for the top aquariums. Now the LED bulbs that are in there are relatively cheap ones, but they're 5,000 Kelvin color temperature rating. However, when it came to the bottom aquariums, uh, I knew that I was most likely gonna go with some sort of fluorescent tubing or LED tubing lights or something like that. But these ones are 5,000 Kelvins and these ones are full spectrum, completely different in color, which I'm totally okay with because the full spectrum are typically indoor grow lights. And they were super cheap, installed just like this kind of just hanging there. I'll get a little closer so you can actually see that uh, they're just LED lights and they light up the aquariums really well. The benefit here is these are 19 watts and 19 watts. So this tank is being lit by 40 watts of lighting. And as you can see, it's more than enough. Mind you, I think we'll just be testing this color spectrum and these lights and seeing how they do long term. And these ones up here are about 10 watts a piece. So 30 watts to light that, 40 watts to light this. 70 watts of lighting total. Previously, we used more than that on a 120, just one. As for lids, none on this one right now, and I was just testing uh, the sizing and whatnot, but you guys already know we're using this, uh, this open cell corrugated polycarbonate paneling. You've seen me use it before. Originally, we used it on the 375 years ago. It's being used on the 2000. I'm using it over on the 700 now. And of course, all of the 120s as well. Oh, there's concerns that I might not be able to get into this. I just stand up on my little, uh, little step stool and it's perfect. Plenty of headroom, lots of room to skate, etc. This is this is ideal. I love this setup. Obviously, I just got to cut one of these in half, drill a little finger hole, but no big deal. What about backgrounds? Well, you remember I painted the wall black. There is no point to me adding a background because the tanks are so close to the wall that they now all just have black backgrounds. If I don't like it, technically I can slide back different colored cardboard, paper or whatever if I do want to change it but I love it as is. Look, it's just it just looks fantastic. Now this is a big one. I also did something to, uh, so when I come out here and I wanna turn on all the lights, if they're not on timers, cause not all the tanks have plants or anything and a lot don't even have fish in them right now. Um, but if there's no plants in the tank, I usually turn the lights on when I want to and timers, sometimes I, bottom line is I, a lot of the times I gotta turn on all the lights individually and there is what, I don't know, 30, 40 lights out here. Now I control everything through my phone. Every system can come on by just pressing a button. Those types of things are a dime a dozen, get them on Amazon or whatever, they're just little controllers. And it's just right there. Now if I don't want to do it through my phone or don't have my phone handy, it's just got a button. Boop, boop. That one controls all the 180s as well as all the 120s and then the other light will handle the 700 the 2000 the 375 and all of the 40 gallons now with like a lot of the generic stuff done the next thing i'm going to focus on personally uh is the filtration i gotta build the filters for all of these tanks and then i can start scaping it 
but what about stocking? What are we going to do for fish? I know that's a question everybody has. Well, we still, we have most of the fish that we want to do. So here's the idea. In tank one, I'm thinking we go with the Oscars here. The first fish that greets you in here is going to be a tank full of happy Oscars. We're not only doing the six Oscars that we have, which are going to have a massive growth spurt in this tank, but then we're adding the Fahaka Puffer, who they're already currently with, as well as my Bicher that's in with the Stingrays right now. And that will be the stocking for that tank. As for scaping, I'm doing something, I've already been kind of playing around with it, and it looks you know what I'm gonna say. It looks absolutely phenomenal. It's gonna be the ultimate Oscar Aquarium and I'm incredibly excited about that. What about that middle tank? So the middle tank is gonna be archer fish or an Asian aqu themed aquarium. I thought that was gonna make the most sense because it's in the center of the room and the fish that we're putting in there are going to be, well, one of the fish that we're gonna be putting in there are the archer fish. Now, I wanted to have enough clearance to be able to set up targets and whatnot so we could train them to shoot the, uh, food out of the air and that's gonna be awesome. Um, and I also thought they'd do far better up here. And as you can see, look, when I'm standing in front of this, my head comes to about the center. It's like perfect viewing angle for just standing there and looking or sitting at the, the podcast table with uh, Tamara, who's makes me do everything all by myself. But the other thing that I want to do is the clouded archer fishes technically can live in freshwater all their lives. Uh, and we're going to cover this and go in depth eventually, but a lot of archer fish, including these guys, can adapt to brackish or even full salt water. So what I'm going to do is slowly change them over to brackish, perhaps because one of the other fish that I want to get for them is the mono fish, which is a totally brackish water fish and can do well in salt water as well, because I want to do a community aquarium Asian thing. I don't want to have individual species aquariums or too many of them anymore. I wanna do some really cool things that I'm really excited about. And brackish water, nobody really does it. And if they do, it's always like a lot of the same stuff. And even archer fish are pretty common, but I wanna do something that I think looks absolutely gorgeous. And I'm inspired by a number of things. And when that video comes out, and if I can locate them, I already have Jeff uh, my, uh, from One Fish, Two Fish in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, my local fish store, um, looking for them. But once I can get a hold of them, we'll get like 10, 20 of them. And uh, we'll start to convert all of them from fresh to brackish and maybe to salt, but probably stay around brackish water. And if you don't know what that is, it's a mixture of fresh and salt. That aquascape is going to be something you've never seen before that uh, I've already toyed around with a few ideas with it and it's way better than I thought it was going to be. It's going to be a one of a kind. It's going to be just absolutely phenomenal once again. What about the last tank? The, 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 this is all super exciting. So that one last one's gotta be boring, right? Meh, not really. See, in the last aquarium, we're adding the red belly piranha. And we've got like 20 of them. All of those piranha, and once we get them in here, they're gonna have a massive growth spurt. They've already gone from this to this anyways, but uh, once we get them in here, they'll go through a massive growth spurt. And then we're gonna add in uh, probably one to 200, most likely neon tetras. Now, don't piranha eat? Uh, other fish and the answer is you know sort of they'll typically go after an injured fish or a sick fish or a dead fish uh, little tiny neon tetras they don't bother with and that's common knowledge uh, in public aquariums you'll always see a big pack of um, piranha with tiny little neon tetras because they just don't see them as a food source so that tank will be absolutely gorgeous and for that skate most likely heavily like intertwined wood manzanita branches I think either the branches are gonna come down or go up, I'm not sure. And that's kind of like something that I've been up to lately is getting these ready, but of course, working on a tremendous amount of other things. And uh, if you wanna follow along, you're not subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you do, or you're simply gonna miss this type of stuff. And, but anyways, I gotta get building the filters. I gotta get doing a lot of things. I really wanna move on to escaping the tanks. And to be honest, with you, I wanna get the fish out of those little quarantine tanks. So I'll see you guys in the next video. I gotta get to work.